so thankful that you're here with us. Follow me, part two. What we're doing in this series is learning what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I remember when I met Jesus, and yeah, it's been uh, over four decades ago, in my teens when I met him, I knew that uh, I had a relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. And I wanna let you know, I just love Jesus. I remember coming home from school almost every day and I had uh, just a couple albums uh, back then and I would play worship music as loud as I could because I was the only one home and just worshiping Jesus. And I would spend time reading his word. I just couldn't get enough of his word. I literally couldn't get enough of just worshiping and singing and honoring him. And then slowly but surely, I learned what it means to serve him and what an honor and a privilege it was to serve him because that was an extension of my love for Jesus. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but I was beginning a journey that Jesus was going to make something out of my life. That's right. He wants to make something out of our lives. And what is that that he's making and how does he do it? That's what this series, Follow Me, is all about. So if you're interested in being a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ, you came to the right place because we are going to help you not only learn what that means, but at Bridge City Church, we want to provide as many opportunities as possible for you to become all that God's created you to be. Here's our text that we're launching out of every week here. Mark chapter 1 verse 17. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you become, underline become, become fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and they followed him him become show you how manufacture construction something is going to be made here that's right you're going to become something Jesus when we meet him in a real way and we create this love relationship with him that I hope that's what you're enjoying in your life listen he's going to help us become something here it's not like just following somebody on on Instagram or on Twitter it's not just following them from a distance like looking at their little uh, statements and pictures. No, follow him was something so much more active, so much more living and breathing and joy filled. So here we're going to go to our text for today. It's found in Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. And here we go in verse 13. And this is, um, Jesus is actually, he's preaching, he's teaching, people are getting healed. He's doing it. And there's a lot of people watching him. And he's starting to gather a crowd. He's starting to gather some followers here. So afterward, and that means after he was ministering here in Mark chapter 3, Jesus went up on a mountain and he called out the ones he wanted to go with him. Now, I want to make it clear, it, in, in context here, there's a lot of people following him. And so he goes up on a mountain, there's a lot of people here, and he begins to call out people here. And they came to him, and he appointed, key word, 12 of them, and called them his apostles. They were to accompany him, and he would send them out to preach, giving them authority to cast out demons. There's three words here. Okay, three words. Appointed, make something of them. We saw that become. This is Jesus. And I, and I think like Jesus wants to do more than just bless us. He wants to build us into something. He wants to make something of our lives here. And so make something, manufacture, construction. I am under construction here. A company, now this word in Greek means after with. It's the effect afterwards from being with him. Now, so Jesus wasn't just into hanging out, okay? He had an agenda. Now I learned from our founding pastor, Pastor Keith, is that he, he always jokes like this, and he says, hey, never trust anybody without an agenda. 
Jesus had an agenda. He wasn't just saying, hey, let's just hang out. Let's see what happens. No, he was manufacturing something. And he says, I want you to accompany me because after you're with me, after with, there's going to be an effect in your life. It's the change that happens from being with him. The third key word here is authority, and said so he would give them authority. The Greek word here, excusia, delegated authority. This is what he wants to give us. He wants to delegate his authority to his followers, to his apostles, to his disciples, so that they could accomplish and go somewhere with this. This is the key here. It's authorizing them to act to the extent they are guided by faith. So, Excusia has faith attached to it. So here is the big idea. Here's the big idea. Becoming a follower of Jesus includes these three aspects. So the three aspects found in our text. What are these three? Accompany him. He's looking for those who will accompany him. Next is being appointed, being manufactured into something, being constructed into something. And third, having authority. So being a follower here, and we see the immediate invitation that Jesus gave had these three aspects to them. So I want to uncover the rest of the time what it means, actually even on a day-by-day -day basis, what if you're not called to be an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, or maybe even a leader in church? Does this still apply to you? I believe it does. I believe that Jesus gives the invitation to be a follower out to all of us here. Now, before I get to that, I want to cover four stages. Four stages of going from a believer to a disciple. Now, these four stages are very important. First of all, it's just a believer. There are a lot of people that just believe in God. They believe that there's a God. Uh, he's out there. They acknowledge, yep, there's a God. The next is, is a Christian. A Christian is somebody who has some uh, attributes that resemble Jesus or the Bible, and they have some characteristics, but that's kind of as far as it goes. The next key stage that, that I believe we're invited to is to go to that of a follower. And that means we're actively pursuing a relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. Keyword, actively pursuing. So we're learning, therefore, because when you pursue a relationship, you learn what it means to be selfless, serving, sacrificing, all of those things. That's what you're learning how to be. A disciple, however, is this. It's being completely obedient to the Word of God. When we are completely obedient to the Word of God, listen, we're following the teacher and the teaching, but we have multiplication in us. It's where we get the word apprentice, actually. I'm being apprenticed, which means I am going to learn everything I'm given, I'm going to actually be doing, not just acknowledging, not just resembling, not just pursuing, but actually doing. The closer you get to the cross, the fewer people you will find. That's right. Jesus is taking us on a journey. And you may just be a believer. You're acknowledging God. I want you to move up a level. Maybe you're a Christian. You're resembling Jesus in the Bible. It's time to move up a level. It's time to go to pursuing a relationship. And pursuing a relationship, then for those that are called, we're going to learn what it means to be an apprentice. We're going to multiply our lives into others. And I don't believe that's only up to pastors and prophets and apostles and leaders in a church. I believe we can all do that. That's where we're going with this series. So the call, this call that we all have here, Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Then calling to the crowd to join his disciples. Catch that. He's calling to the crowd to join his disciples. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. 
So if you want to be a follower, there's something, there's another level here. And I believe Jesus is calling to the crowds today. And he's saying, there's more. There's more for you here. There's more that you can become here. There's more relationship for you. God has, God believes in you and me much more than you and me believe in you and me. He has this plan for us that he's manufacturing something out of our lives that's useful for him on a day-by-day basis here. Salvation is free. Discipleship will cost you everything. Okay, let's look at this first point here. Becoming a follower of Jesus, the first aspect is accompanying him. Accompanying him. Remember, that means after with. That means the change that happens afterwards here. Jesus spent a lot of time with his father. There's a lot of verses here that go along with this. And Jesus spent a lot of time. He was constantly leaving the crowds and going to a quiet place. He was constantly getting up early in the morning. He was constantly separating himself for the father. Now, this is why I believe in Mark chapter 1, verse 38, we see we must go. We must go. Where did that happen? There was an urgency about Jesus' life because he spent time with his Father. When you and I just get up on a regular basis and we spend time loving Jesus, listening to worship music, stilling our mind and our hearts, whether it's on a retreat or, 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 or a group or a or a time with him, there's urgency. I know what I'm supposed to do. What else did Jesus say? In John chapter 5, in verse 19, basically Jesus said, I tell you the truth, the Son, he, Jesus, can do nothing except that which he sees his Father in heaven doing. I can't do anything myself. I'm seeing what God, God my Father's doing, and I do that. What if in our everyday lives, with our neighbors and our friends at work, and the way we relate to one another. How about our marriages, our families, uh, our extended families? That we just said, I am only going to do that which I see my Father in heaven doing. And last but not least, in John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus, Jesus' words, red letters, for apart from me, you can do nothing here. We were made for time with him, but our time with him is to produce something. That's, why, that's right, my, my time with Jesus it is so important as I listen to worship music. And I've been really in a season where I'm being very diligent in listening to worship music and filling my mind with the right thing and worshiping Him. My time reading the Bible, studying the Bible, learning definitions in the Bible that we can all learn. Yeah, walking with Him on a regular basis. How about every day we just posture ourselves as not asking Jesus to go with us in our day, but Jesus, where are you going today? What are you doing in my life today? I want to co-labor with Jesus in what he's doing, not just ask Jesus to follow me. Key here, key here. And so, so the birthright of every believer is a relationship with God the Father. Check this verse out. It is so good. John 10, 27. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they, you guessed it, follow me. This is the relationship Jesus wants to have. He wants to not just have us petition him and give him our wish list. He wants to give us our marching orders. What does Jesus want us to do? He wants us to listen. That means listen in a way to hear God, which prompts faith. I know them through personal experience. I want, to, I want to know you. Not only does Jesus want to be known by us and we experience him, he says, I know them, I'm experiencing you. This is a two-way relationship here. It's so awesome. Follow me, go in the same way with. And so hearing his voice, knowing his word, worshiping him, walking with him, learning about him on a day-by-day basis is what he wants, not just from us, but he wants for us. So key. So what are the ways that we hear him? 
The number one way that we hear him is through the word of God. What does God's word communicate to us? That's how we hear him. The number one way is the word. It must be based. What does the Bible say? Even in decisions in our lives, does the Bible have anything that it communicates on this topic? Let's learn what that is and let's do that. That's how we hear him. I'm reading the Bible. Something jumps out. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do here. Number two is prayer. Just spending time talking and listening to God. Not just petitioning him. This is what I need. This is what I need. This is what I need. Don't forget about this. But listening, spending time, stilling our soul, quieting, whether it's in total silence or just listening to some worship music, just a time where you're talking with God and listening to him. This third way is the way that we most often experience, and it's through a local church, a local church. And there's three things that we get here. We get prophetic. That means there's a prophetic ministry, which is edification, encouragement, and comfort to men. That's found in 1 Corinthians 14. So there's ways that in the church we have people tell us, this is what I believe God's saying to you. But second way here is through the preaching. I believe that through the preaching of the word right now, you're hearing God. You're hearing his direction. The declaration of the word of God and expounding on it in the ways that we do. Third is, is through the people of the church. That's right, prophetic, the preaching, and people. I could actually put pastor in there, but that's mainly through preaching. It's not always a personal relationship. But the people in our small group, the people that I relate to give me godly perspective and they helped me hear God. I'm so thankful there was a situation in my life just this week that I'll be honest, I knew what God wanted me to do, but I just didn't want to do it. Yes, I still have times like this, and my flesh didn't want to do it, but I purposed in my heart that I was going to call a person that's trusted, that has proven to be trusted, and I know they're going to tell me not what I want to hear, but what I need to hear, and I am under a man under authority. I called them within two minutes. They told me exactly what I needed to do. I knew it was what the God would want me to do. I knew it was what the Word would want me to do. I knew it was going to be a blessing. So guess what I did? I did what they said, and there was a huge blessing on the other side of it. I'm so thankful that I hear God, and I was able to follow God through listening, through input, through prophetic preaching and People, people in my life. Last way we hear God is through circumstances. As I experience circumstances, I ask God to show me what he's doing so that I not only just get through my circumstance, but that I see God. In John chapter 14, John 14, 21, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself. God wants to reveal himself. Yeah, shine upon us, make visible, manifest. Not only do we intimately know him, but he intimately knows us and then there's the after with. God shows me what he did here. Becoming a follower of Jesus includes these three aspects. That first one was accompany him. The second one is appointment, being appointed. Now remember, Jesus here in his point number two wants to make something out of us. He's doing something. He's manufacturing something in our lives. And a lot of times we don't see that. We're in it for the blessing, but not the responsibility here. So, see, it, it, it takes the church, it takes a church to make us into this, into what he wants us to do. Let me say this. Ten books in the New Testament were written to a local church. In the book of Revelation, seven times the Spirit of the Lord is speaking speaking to a local church, a local people, a local region there. Many times, God speaks through the church. I can't say all the time, but many times. So it's not only about me accompanying him, it's we accompanying him. 
We are being appointed. We are being made into something. There's something that we're doing at church and through church that we're making followers, completely, fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. Isn't it interesting that one of the first things Jesus did as he began ministry, when he was doing ministry, one of the first things recorded he did is he got other people. He got other people and he wanted to make something out of them. He wants to make something out of us. This is Jesus' way. This is what Jesus does here. Over 50 times in the New Testament, there's one another's. All the one another's. He wants us to experience him and we're made into something by one another here. Jesus got himself a group. And he wants us not only to receive the benefits of, but receive the responsibilities for the whole here. I need others. And if I'm going to be made into what Jesus wants me to be made into, it's going to take intentionality and tenacity. That's right, an intentional purpose and a tenacity. That's right. We need the intentionality and the tenacity of a teenage girl in the pursuit of a new cell phone. If you've ever experienced a teenage girl in the pursuit of a cell phone or a new cell phone, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's intentionality and there's a tenacity. They're going to find a way to get this done. That's what I'm talking about here. Jesus, you're going to make me into something, but it's not for the faint of heart. You're going to teach me through circumstance. You're going to teach me through others. You're going to teach me in these ways. We are being made into something here. And so the people that we get around in our small groups, they help us resemble him. Small groups that are a part of the church, small groups that are submitted to one direction, that have standards, that have responsibility attached to it. That's what we do. Have you ever been around a a, a, a wood fire, a fire pit maybe outside or a fire in some way. If you've noticed you, you do that, you begin to, you begin to smell that. You, you begin to take on the aroma of that which you are around. Maybe you have an, an aunt and, and, and that wears a certain kind of perfume and maybe it's a lot of perfume. And when she hugs you goodbye at that family function, man, you take a little bit of that perfume home with you. See, what, what that reminds us of is who we're around, we begin to smell like. We begin to act like. And that's why it's so important that we put ourselves in places where we are being appointed and made into something here. I want to ask you, what are you being made into? Jesus wants to make us into something and he uses his church to do it. Are you in a group? Are you on a team? Being in a group and on a team, that's what members of our church do. Why? Because we're being made into something. Selfless, serving, sacrificing, working together, experiencing community together. What a joy. Why? Because followers of Jesus, we become followers of Jesus with these three aspects. Accompany him, be appointed by him. But this last one's the, where it begins to get good. To use the authority that he gives us. Use the authority. Now, let me point out here, first of all, this is so good here. Acts chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Now, when the men of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish court, the council here, saw the confidence and boldness of Peter and John, they grasped the fact that they were uneducated, in untrained, informal education, that is. They never went to like a seminary or Bible school. But they, so they were, they were ordinary men. How, they were talking about you and me, ordinary everyday people here. They were astounded and began to recognize that they had been with Jesus. They accompanied him and they were appointed by him. And they spoke out boldly in this way. And, 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 and they saw the man being healed by them. Listen, this is the authority, the excusia, the delegated authority that we get being a part of a church. If you want to be a man or woman with God's authority, you have to learn to be 
under God's authority. That's a biblical principle. I am a man under authority, therefore I have authority. It's been delegated to me. This is why it's so important here. Just maybe we don't have more delegated authority. We're not seeing more miracles and things happen because we don't, we are not accompanying him being with him and seeing the effect of time with him, hearing him, following him, and being appointed, being made of something. Listen, when we're in relationship, I'm being made, I'm belonging, there's something Jesus is opening up for us. I want to read now from the Gospel of Luke. Same thing happening that I read earlier, our text for the day, Mark chapter 3. In Mark chapter 3, we find the same thing that happened in Luke 6. Remember, Mark wrote about it. Now, Luke wrote about it. Now, Luke adds something significant that happens. Remember, Jesus went up on the mountain. He called those he himself wanted. He appointed them that they would accompany him and he would give them authority. Remember, God's goal for you is to experience his authority Monday through Saturday. Experience what it means to have a living, breathing relationship with him and that you can share that with others because it's a love relationship here. So I'm sorry, I'm, surely I digress. I'm just getting so excited about that. In Luke chapter 6, verse 17, this is, he, Luke picks it up where Mark left off there. And when they came down from the mountain, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large level area surrounded by many of his followers, you got it, and by the crowds. Jesus here has, he, he, he literally has disciples, he has his followers, and he has a big crowd, okay? And there were people from all over Judea and Jerusalem and from as far north as Tyre and Sidon. They came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those troubled by evil spirits were healed. Everyone was trying to touch him because healing power went out for him and he healed them. Now check this out. Jesus is done. He calls those he himself wanted. He, now here there's crowds, there's followers, there's disciples. I believe that there were those who who believed in him, those who didn't believe in him. There were all the above here. And Jesus immediately takes them and says, if you want to accompany me, let's come off of the mountain and get down to a large level area. And I believe this is what people in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania are waiting for. They're waiting for God's people to get off of the holy mountain, come down to a level place and begin to heal people who are troubled by evil spirits. There's people that need healed and they need to be made whole. This is what the authority of God is for. And he wants to give it to people just like you and me, ordinary everyday people that have been made into something by the word of God under the authority of the local church helping us learn what it means to be followers here. This is so important and such a joy. Jesus wasted no time to say, this is what I'm all about here. This is what I want for you. Jesus wants his followers to have authority. He wants them to be delegated to so that people can be healed. That's what I want for you. And that's what Jesus wants for you. And he wants to use us to do it, but we have to grow up and realize that, we're, that he wants to ac we accompany him. It's the effect thereafter. So when I spend time with him and you receive this preaching, what's the after effect of it? That's the being a follower, not just a casual observer, not just I'm going to sit around and wait what happens. Listen, I'm actively doing this and we're actively distributing his power. And this is what God wants for you in your apartment building. We're at your workplace, on the bus, wherever you are, in whatever committees you're on in the community. He wants you to be a delegated representative of him and, he, and represent him wherever you are. That's what he wants for us. But we can't do this without him and without one another in the local church. That's right. That's where I believe because we are, being, we are being made into a spiritual house. So why do we have membership? 
there's a benefit of it, but there's the responsibility that says, I am going to conduct my life in a way that I'm being made into something for great for Jesus Christ. He is making us into. I want to close this time together and I want to read some verses out of John chapter 15, but it's out of what is referred to as the message. Now, this is not a study Bible. This is a way that this could be communicated. But I thought it communicated Jesus' words in a way that might help us understand. So I just want to read them to you because I believe they're going to edify you and encourage you and show you something about Jesus here. And after all, that's what this is all about. Jesus' words here. These are red letters. And this is a way that Jesus might say it in 2023. Live in me. Make your home in me, just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. That's right, we're joined together with him. A branch, actually in the Old Testament, tribe refers to a branch. You need a tribe. You need a church. You need a people uh, uh, that you, you, you call your own here. He says, live in me, be with me, and I with you. It goes on. I am the vine. You are the branches, plural here. He's talking to plural you, and plural branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, the relationship is intimate and organic. The harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood, gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. But if you can make yourselves at home with me and my words are at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my Father shows who he is. When you produce grapes, when you mature as disciples, that's right, the fruit of our lives, demonstrating Jesus in every aspect of our lives, learning to, as we pursue this relationship, I become serving, sacrificing, selfless, and I begin to be more like him. Have you been joined together with Jesus? Have you joined your life to him and he with you? That means have you asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sin and ask him now to lead your life into the future? If you didn't, you can do that right now. That's right. Click on, click on. Listen, I want to I wanna make a decision for Jesus. I want to commit my life to God. I want to make a decision. I, that's what I have to do right now. Just say it. Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Lead me into my life. That's the beginning, not the end. But maybe there's a step forward Jesus has for you today in your followership with him. That's right. Jesus asked us to follow him, but he wants your life every part of our lives to bear fruit, abundant fruit, mature disciples in him. That's what this is all about. And that's what we want for you here at Bridge City Church. And that's because that's what Jesus wants for you. So let's together continue to be made into something through the word of God and honoring him and through one another. And let's see what happens in the world around us as we distribute his authority and his blessings to those. As, listen, the kingdom of God expands and his church is built by his followers. Man, I, I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm so excited about this series. Next week, we're going to go into Matthew 16. And what does it really mean to pick up your cross and follow Jesus in denying yourself? What does that mean? Come on back next week. You won't want to miss it because that's what we're going to uncover for you. Thanks for being with us today.